So blood. All right? We have about one and a half gallons in our body. It makes about 10% of our total body weight. Uh, it's sticky. It's opaque. It has a metallic taste. Should you ever bite your lip and you taste the blood, it has that saltiness, the metallic taste. It color, the color varies from uh, scarlet red to dark red rich blood. So it's, it's, it depends on the amount of oxygen. It's never blue. All right, I know people look at their veins like, oh, I got blue, you know, blue blood. It, it, no, it's not. It's just the way the angle of the light that comes in and going in here. Because think about it. When blood comes out of your, uh, out of your vein, when they do a vena puncture and it goes into the test tube, it comes out red. It's, you know, it's not blue. So don't think like that. It's just the way the refractional light comes in. Um, so it varies depending on how much oxygen is there. The pH is very important when we get into all this. Uh, 7.35 to 7.45. Uh, the temperature is slightly higher than the rest of your body too. Okay. Blood is the body's fluid tissue. Okay. A lymph is also considered fluid tissue, but we won't be spending that much time about it in here. But it's composed of plasma and formed elements. And we have three different formed elements that goes on here. Erythrocytes, which are red blood cells or RBCs. You could use any of those words or abbreviations. It's all accepted. Just if you're going to use RBCs, just make sure you understand what erythrocyte is because that might appear on your exam and you need to know what that means. But erythro means red, site means cell. Leukocyte, and I have seen leukocyte with a C instead of a K here. That's acceptable too. Those are your white blood cells or WBCs. And then you have the thrombocytes, which are platelets or PLTs. Okay? So let me show you what's going on here. If we take a test tube, okay, we have some blood that comes out of you, and we fill it up, and then we make this test tube go into a centrifuge, and we spin it around for about five minutes or so, then all the heavy stuff goes down to the bottom, and all the light stuff goes to the top. Are you oriented there? Okay. When it does, you're going to have divisions that go on. Now, all of this, when you look at the whole picture here, this is what we call whole blood. Okay, that's what you give is whole blood. The heavy stuff down here are going to be your red blood cells. And that makes up about 45% of your whole blood. In this very small area that will look kind of beige in color, this small area is where you're going to have both the white blood cells and the platelets. This is going to make up less than 1% of your whole blood. This area looks very beige. And for your vampire lovers out there, we have a special name for this called the buffy coat or the buffy layer. Am I telling my age? You know who Buffy is? Okay, all right. All right, so we call it a buffy coat or buffy layer. In this area here is mostly water. This is the plasma. This is about 55% of your whole blood. And in there, you're going to have all your hormones, all your oxygen gases, all your fibrinogen, proteins. Everything's in there. Okay? Now, another word for you. The percentage of red blood cells in the whole blood the percent of red blood cells in the whole blood has a special name for it also. That's called a hematocrit. Hematocrit, in this particular case, is 45%. Okay? That's what hematocrit is. Who here has heard of hematocrit? Okay. Okay. You'll hear about it quite often later on, too. Okay? Okay? So these are what it looks like. Red blood cells are like this. Okay. Um, we have a lot of those, as you can see. 
and the red blood cell is like this, but there's no hole in it. When you look at a side view of a red blood cell, it's kind of shaped like that. It's just that when light goes through here, it can't go through the, the thick part. But when it goes through here, it can pass right through there. So it looks like there's a hole in the center, but there isn't. It's just thin there. You have white blood cells. We're going to talk about the differences. They look like this. And we also have platelets. Now, of these three formed elements, only one is a true cell. A red blood cell is not a true cell because it's missing something. What is it missing? Mm -hmm. Nucleus. Can it go through mitosis? Mm -hmm. No. It has no nucleus, so there's no chromosomes in it. So when it dies, it dies. Which, by the way, it lasts for about 120 days, and then it dies, for about three or four months. A platelet isn't a real cell because it's really a fragment of a gigantic cell. Just take a plate, smash it on the ground, and take a piece of it, that's a platelet. All right? So it's really a fragment of a gigantic cell. The white blood cells, however, are our real true cells that have a nucleus, kind of shaped differently. We'll talk about those. All right? Um, but they can go through mitosis. Okay? So functions of blood, it's going to transport all our hormones, nutrients, waste products, uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide. It's going to protect by stopping our bleeding, uh, fights infections, uh, and it's also going to help with homeostasis, keep an electrical, electrolyte balance into its, uh, um, where it should be in homeostasis, right? Uh, total fluid pH. So like I said, they're showing the same thing, going through a centrifuge, breaking it all up. And you'll see that there's five different types of white blood cells, which is still what I'm trying to do with you today, is uh, over here, okay? And you'll be able to manage these. Uh, these are what they kind of look like. Pretty easy to manage. I'll show you how to do that. All right, blood plasma. These are the different things that are found in blood plasma. 91% of blood plasma is water. The other 9% is this stuff here. They could have proteins. You have these big things in here that are proteins. They could be non-protein stuff like urea, creatinine, lactic acid. They could be organic stuff, anything with a carbon in it. So carbon, carbohydrates, amino acids, glucose. It could have anything with a charge. Uh, so your electrolytes, respiratory gases. So all of this is going to make up the 9% of plasma. Okay. Now, basic functions of the formed elements. Basic. Red blood cells carry oxygen and a little bit of carbon dioxide. White blood cells fight infection. They're the police of your body. And platelets are going to stop you from bleeding. They're going to be the first, uh, first line defense in blood clotting. Okay? This is what they look like. Right? There's red blood cells. We'll talk about the five different white blood cells. And here's your platelets, which are just fragments off of your gigantic cell. So if you understand, this is how I want you to start wiring your brain for your future. If you understand the functions, then you can also understand the diseases. For instance, if you know that platelets are supposed to clot blood, and you have too little platelets, you're not going to clot blood, right? Then we have something called a hypocoagulable state. You cut yourself, and normally it should, for that particular cut, maybe it's supposed to stop bleeding in like, I don't know, four minutes. But if you have low platelets, it might take 14 minutes, it might take an hour. Makes sense. If you have too many platelets, then you're going to coagulate uh, when you shouldn't even be doing that. You should be clotting blood when your blood vessel is broken, and now platelets should go to that broken blood vessel. You shouldn't be clotting when a blood vessel is not broken. And in a hypocoagulable state, we have too many platelets, they just start clumping and forming a clot, as you've heard about people having them in the legs. Red blood cells. If you have too little red blood cells, you know it carries oxygen, you've got some form of anemia. If your hematocrit is like 30%, that's anemia. And there's a lot of forms of anemia, which you'll get into in lecture. If you have too many red blood cells, then you have polycythemia. Now, too many red blood cells, you might think that, well, that's a good thing. It's a lot of oxygen. Mm, yes, but think of this. If one car, I'm just giving you an analogy here. If one car goes on the highway, and one car can carry, let's say, four people, four oxygens, now you're going to put more cars on the highway. 
more oxygen on the highway, but what happens to traffic? It goes slower. So now to get from point A to point B, sure you have a lot of oxygen, but now it's going to get to the other point in a slower fashion. Does that make sense? All right? And that actually, in an indirect way, actually will increase blood pressure. You'll learn about that later on. White blood cells, if, you have, if it's supposed to fight infection, now you have too little white blood cells, like HIV, you're not going to fight the common cold. Okay? Now, if you have too many white blood cells, that could be an appropriate response or not. If we have crimes on this campus over here, well, we're going to put more security on the, on the campus. That's an appropriate response. If you have a cold, if you have pneumonia, you're going to put, you're going to make sure the white blood cells increase. That's an appropriate response. Does that make sense? Until the crimes are gone. But in certain cases like leukemia, they're going to produce too many white blood cells that just don't function. And that's a form of leukemia. Okay? Questions on that? Okay? So anemia is due to abnormal hemoglobin. Um, there's th I'm not going to go into this, but it's chains that make a hemoglobin, and if the chain is not being made, um, you'll learn about the, the different chains, the amino acid chains. Um, then you've got to replace it with a different kind of chain, and that's not going to be so efficient in binding oxygen to it. So you'll learn about those in lecture. But the one over here I want you to understand is sickle cell anemia. Right? We talked about a little bit of that, I'm sure, in a &P one um, when we dealt with uh, hereditary, right, genetics and stuff. So sickle cell anemia results in a defective gene, and instead of it being round like I showed you up here, it becomes more sickle-shaped, or banana-shaped, or uh, Burger King croissant witch shape, all right? So it becomes more like, um, like a banana, so to say, or it might look like this. And that can cause problems with oxygen binding to the hemoglobin in a proper way and getting released when you should. So what happens here is that you have sickle cells that look like this, or over here. And that's what sickle cell disease is. They have to get these blood cells out and put new blood cells in there. Because these could clump up also and cause pain. Okay, So that's sickle cell anemia. Polycythemia, as I mentioned before, you have too many red blood cells. It makes the blood extra thick, so the viscosity increases, and this can also lead to um, high blood pressure. When we get into, um, we get back into this with respiratory, and I'll talk about blood doping, um, but I want to deal with it now. I want to spend some time with the white blood cells. Okay. So the form elements, the red blood cells, um, show what they look like over here. The white blood cells. There's two types. There's granulocytes and agranulocytes. So let me explain to you what this is. There's granules in the granule sites, these little grains, little specks, and there's things that are contained in there, and they get released when the time comes. But then you also have agranule sites, meaning that there's no uh, granules there. So we have three granules, I'm sorry, three granule sites, neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. But we have two agranulocytes, which are called lymphocytes and monocytes. But this is very misleading. The agranulocytes do have granules there. See, what happened was, when they came up with this nomenclature and uh, identification, they came up with these back in the 1800s, and they noticed under the uh, very small microscopes, or the uh, primitive microscopes, they saw that there was no granules here, I'm sorry, granules here, but no granules here. Until they got the electron microscope eons later. Not eons, but, you know, like maybe the mid-1900s. And now, when they looked at it much closer with an electron microscope, they noticed that they have granules here. But they never changed the name. I have, and I'll be talking about this throughout the rest of the semester, I have this list. People already smirk because you know what list I'm talking about. I have this list that I'm going to put in me when I die hopefully years from now, but I put it in here. And when I, If I'm chosen to go up there with the pearly gates, there's a list here that I'm going to say, okay, God, tell me where this person is because they did not change the name and it's confusing my students down below. I don't know, God's going to look at me like I'm walking to the pearly gates and go, oh, here's that tomorrow, God. Your time's not up yet. Go back down there. Right? I think that's what's going to happen. But I have this list for people that are why they didn't do certain things, because they're confusing everyone down here. 
So I'm going to find out who did that, and I'll be saying a few words to them over there. All right? Um, but until then, you just have to accept it. All right? All of them have granules, except you can't see them with the light microscope, but they're there. Okay? And I, I have a list for God, too. And it's not about a person. Believe me, the platypus is the number one thing. Let's get a beaver, put a beak on it, make it lay eggs, a shell like leather, like lizards, and make it swim. It's mammary glands. It's confusing me. You see what I mean? So I have a list, but they're going to go in my pocket. I'll be thinking of everybody over here. Okay? That list you'll hear about often. All right? So we're going to get into these in a moment. And then the platelets, like I said, is a cell fragment of a gigantic cell. Okay? And this is what they look like. All right, so let's do the white blood cells. We'll run this off for about 15 minutes or so, and I'll show you how to do this. All right? Um, pretty easy to manage. It'll get you ready for um, lecture stuff also. Okay? Look, white, white blood cells, I just explained everything up there. Um, less numerous, make up less than 1% of your whole blood. They phagocytize, they're going to be our police that are going to engulf the bacteria or viruses and break them up. And what happens with them after that, you'll learn in immunology and lecture. Okay? So keep in mind, all white blood cells have granules. Okay? You just can't see them with our microscopes here in certain ones. So these are the different ones. We have neutrophils, we have um, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes. You do need to know the percentages. Okay? You need to know the percentages. So here's a few mnemonics to help you. And you need to know the percentage ranges. Right? That's going to be on your practical exams too. Okay? So here's some little tips to help you with this. First off, the ranges might vary by book, lab book, in my PowerPoint slide, but they're not going to range, they're not going to have a big difference. In other words, I've seen 50 to 70 percent, I've seen 60 to 70 percent, I've seen 50 to 65 percent. It's not going to say 2 to 4 percent. So my suggestion is pick a point and just memorize whatever one you want to use. Okay? It'll be fine. Okay? But some of them get pretty close. Here's 2 to 8, here's 2 to 4. Makes a big difference. You need to understand if your, hemo, if your uh, eosinophil count is 8%, is that normal? Is it high? Is it low? You need to understand what that is. And then if your eosinophil count is up, increased, what does that say about the person? What condition do they have? And that's what I want to talk to you about. So here's a few mnemonics to help you. Never let monkeys eat bananas. Most numerous neutrophils, you'd be lucky to find one of these. This is less than 1% of the white blood cells. Okay? Never let monkeys eat bananas. Now, percentages, I can't give you a really good tip about the range, but here's a little tip about the idea of where it is. We have basically five major coins in the American and in the United States. We have a 50 cent piece, we got a 25 cent piece. We have a 10 cent piece, we have a 5 cent piece, and a 1 cent piece. For the most part, 50 to 70 percent of this, 20 to 30 percent here, 2 to 8 on this one, 2 to 4 on this one, less than 1 percent here. All right? An idea, should you have no idea, at least you could, you know, for future reference, you have some idea about that. Does that help you a little? Okay? I got a lot of other mnemonics to give you throughout the rest of the course. Okay, so that's where it's showing you percentages. All right, so what I have here on the five uh, next five slides, I have one slide for each one of these um, white blood cells. So I'm going to show you how to manage these, and believe me, I'm going to do right after this. You're, we're going to do a little interaction thing, and you'll know them. You'll definitely know them. Neutrophils, 50 to 70 percent. This is the most numerous that we have here. You're seeing that the cells themselves have some sort of weird kind of shape. The nucleus has a weird kind of shape. So what happens here is that we have a nucleus, I'm sorry, a, a white blood cell, neutrophil, and its nucleus is what we call lobed. There's a lobe there and a little string, a lobe there and a little string, a lobe there and a little string, a lobe there. That's how it's shaped up. It's lobed is what we say. And there's usually three to five lobes there. 
There are granules there. The granules are light-complected. They're like lilac, but you'll see them. These are their white blood, or the uh, neutrophils are there to engulf bacteria, to engulf viruses, to engulf foreign cells. But they're not there to destroy them, except for bacteria. It's like if something happens on campus here, security, there's certain people they can actually, um, I guess, write a citation to or kick them off the campus. Other ones they have to keep here until the police come here to take over. Does that make sense? Same way here. It will phagocytize bacteria, foreign cells, viruses, and toxins to keep them there until the bigger people can come in, and you'll learn all about that in immunology, but they will destroy bacteria. They only kill bacteria. So if I ask you, what is this cell? And you say neutrophil, and then I ask, what's the function here? And you say kills viruses, that's wrong. Phagocytize viruses, kills bacteria, yes, because there's another cell that kills viruses, not this one. Does that make sense? You gotta pay attention to those words. Eosinophil, look, at that looks totally different. It's lobe, but usually only two to three lobes on there. But its, ears, its granules are red in color. It actually looks like, if you have red blood cells around there, they're staying the same color as the red blood cells. So if you see the red blood cells uh, looking like the same as the color as the granules, then you know what this is, okay? Um, this is going to increase during times of um, parasitic worms and allergies, all right? It's not going to fight allergies. It's just going to make sure that it's going to, if the, if the other cells that are coming in to fight the allergies, it's going to supervise and make sure that the allergies, I mean, I'm sorry, the, white, the other blood, white blood cells don't get too happy and cause a hypersensitivity to that allergen. So in other words, if someone's got problems with allergies, maybe there's something wrong with their eosinophils. Maybe they're not increasing what they're supposed to. They should increase during allergies, but not to fight the allergies, but to tone down the rest of your immune system so it doesn't get too hyper. But it also increases and fights against parasitic worms, though. Okay? Questions on that? All right. The basophil. Go and go luck trying to find one of these suckers. Very difficult. It's Nucleus is lobed, but its granules are very, very dark. So dark that it's difficult to find the delineation of the nucleus itself. The granules in here contain chemicals called histamine and heparin. Heparin is an anticoagulant. It's going to uh, not form a lot of clotting. So think about what's happening here. You have histamine that increases during allergies. And what happens here, if you have an allergy, pollen or something, goes inside your nose, think of what's happening here. Basophils are going to go there, release heparin, so it's going to make sure nothing's going to clot there. So we've got good blood flow going to that area. So the white blood cells can go there and fight that battle. It's also going to release histamine. And histamine is going to get released and it's going to vasodilate your blood vessels. We're going to open up the highways to get another lane of cars in there. That's why when someone has an allergy at the nose, it appears his nose appears red because vasodilation occurs, the blood vessels get closer to this superficial area of your skin and appears red. Blood is getting into that area. It's also going to allow the cells of the blood vessels to open up a little, allowing the white blood cells to squeeze out into the interstitial area much easily. The problem is, is that yes, they're opening up, allowing the white blood cells to go out there, but it's also going to allow water to leak out there too, because you're making them open. So that's why you start talking like this all the time you have the code, because the other extra water is out there, right? So what do you have to give yourself, you know, because you have a basophils that's doing this, what do you have to give yourself so that you don't talk like this? What do you have to give yourself? An antihistamine. See? Sometimes the antihistamine will also have epinephrine. What will epinephrine do to blood vessels? Constrict them for that reason. 
or they have pseudoepinephrine, which isn't the real thing, but just as good. Okay? So does that make sense what heparin does, what histamine does? Okay? And then you got lymphocytes. And lymphocytes, um, these are not your granules. This has no granules that you can see, but they're there. The nucleus is round, usually fills up most of the cell, okay? Except maybe a little sliver of cytoplasm you can see here, all right? Lymphocytes, they turn into two things, either T cells or B cells. T cells are what HIV kills and is an important component of the immune system, okay? B cells are going to make antibodies. We'll talk a little bit about antibodies next week. All right. So um, they do other things, but for you at this level, worry about it. What they this is all you need to worry about: T cells and B cells. You'll learn about more about that when you, when you get to the immune system, but it's too much right now. Then you have monocytes. Monocytes. They don't have granules that you can see, but they're there. But the kin the the, um, the nucleus is usually a U shape or a kidney shape. Okay, and you can see that. It's not lobed, okay? Like a lymphocyte, it's not lobed. So you have this kidney shape. This is the largest of all the white blood cells. And you know how you have police officers patrolling the, the streets and they're doing a wonderful job, so we have police that are in the bloodstream. But the commissioner says, you know what? We've got a lot of um, uh, crimes going on in the, in the local mall over here. So I don't want you to be patrolling the streets anymore. No more in the bloodstream. I want you now to go inside an organ, inside the mall over here, and now you're going to be stationed here, and you're going to just patrol the, um, uh, the organ. So what happens here is that monocytes can go into organs and stay there for the rest of their lives, and now they're known as macrophages. And now they're going to engulf things and just, you know, in cancer, or not cancer, well, cancer cells, but they're going to engulf like viruses and bacteria and do what they need to do over there. But now they're stationary. And macrophages in the um, kidneys are called mesangual cells. Macrophages in the lungs are called dust cells. Macrophages in the liver are called Cooper cells. They have all these different names, but that's what macrophages are. All right? Questions on that? All right, let me just do this interactive thing to put it all together and see if you can do this. Now, this is what should go into your head, okay? Five different ones over here. Let's look at um, let's look at this one over here for the moment, okay? Now, don't answer the question. This is the question that you should put in your head, okay? You say to yourself, is the nucleus lobed? And this one here, A. So I'm asking you, is the nucleus lobed? Yeah. Yes, okay? Good. So if, you, if it's low, then you just narrowed it from five choices to how many? Three. Okay? Now we've got to go and say, is there granules there? Yes. There's confirmation. Now I know it's a granule site. Okay? Now you've got to ask yourself about the granules. Are they reddish in color? Are they very light complected? Are they very dark where you can't even see the nucleus product? Fully. They're light. So if they're lightly complected and it's lobed over here, what is that? Neutrophil. Neutrophil. You see how you put it together? Okay. Let's look at this one over here. Okay. So you say to yourself, is this white blood cell, is it lobed? Is the nucleus lobed? No. So you narrow it down to how many? Two. You can bring a quarter in and flip it. You can bring that. It's not cheating. You can wonder though. But yeah, you bring it down to two. Now, is the nucleus, is it, so there wouldn't be granules there that you can see. Now you gotta ask about the nucleus. Is the nucleus round, filling up most of the cell, or might be a sliver of cytoplasm, or is it more like a kidney shape or a U shape, the nucleus? It's round. So my question might be, give me, I might not ask what this is, I might say, what's the normal percentage range of white blood cells here? 20 and 30 percent. What can this become? T cell or B cell? What is this? Lymphocytes. You see how you're working it? Okay. Let's look at this one over here. Is the nucleus lobed? Eh, let's go to the next question. Is there granules there? Yes. Okay. 
So now you got to ask yourself, are the granules, are they red, reddish in color? Are they dark, which it's difficult to see the nucleus, or are they very lightly complected? They're dark. So what is this? Basophil. What do the granules, what do they contain in, in the basophil? Histamine and heparin, heparin. Okay? Not too bad. Let's look at this one here. The nucleus, is it lobed? Okay, yeah. Are the granules there? Yeah, okay. Now are the granules, ask yourself, are they reddish in color, are they dark, or are they very light? They're reddish, they're almost the same color as the white red blood cells over here. So let me ask you this. Now you know what it is, so my question is, is an increase of this tells me what condition do you have? Allergies, Allergies or parasitic worms. What is this? What did you say? Eos yes, eosinophils. I said something else. Uh, eosinophils. Okay. Now let's just go through the motions. I know you process elimination. You did this already. But let's look at this one here. Is the nucleus lobed? No. It's not the best one. I would give you something different. But is the nucleus, is it U-shaped, kidney shape, or is it filling up most of the cell? Kind of kidney shape. What can this become? Macrophage. What is this? Monocytes. Monocytes. Good. Not too bad, right? Okay? Not too bad? All right. The last thing on here are leukemias. I just want to show you really fast. Uh, leukemias, bloodstream, there's a lot of... It's basically your body's producing a lot of white blood cells, but they're not mature. It's like if you have a police academy, and if it, I don't know much about the police academy, but if you have, let's say, it takes two years to become a full-fledged rookie, well, we're now going to graduate you in two months. Are they going to be able to do what they're supposed to do? They'll be killing good guys, bad guys, you know what I'm saying? So maybe I shouldn't be talking about police at this day and age, right? You know what I'm saying. Um, but you know what I'm saying is, is that kind of thing. is They're immature, these white blood cells, and they can't function very well. <clears throat> um, what happens here is that they're made in the bone marrow, and because you have so much of these white blood cells that are immature, it has no room to have red blood cells grow or platelets grow because it's overcrowded. The b bone marrow, BM is bone marrow. Bone marrow is overcrowded with this immature white blood cells. So think how this person's going to present. They're going to have infections because the white blood cells can't fight it. They're going to be anemic. They're going to. It's going to take a long time for them to clot blood. So it's putting that all together. There's nothing wrong with the platelets. There's nothing wrong with the with the uh, red blood cells. It's just not enough there because the white blood cells are overcrowding the bone marrow because there's just too much of it. Okay? So that's what happens. This is what normally would look like in, in a white blood, or a, um, uh, just a field, normal, uh, normal field of view. You might see one or two, three, maybe four white blood cells in one field of blue view. What type of white blood cell is that? Lymphocytes, see, it's filling up most of the, the nucleus is not lobed, it's filling up most of the cell. I know people in the back can't see. This one over here, neutrophils. See, they're not too bad, but that's normal. This is not normal. You see all the white blood cells there? All right, so that's what'll happen, okay? So like I said, infections, easy bruising, anemia, uh, death, they usually have overwhelming infections, internal hemorrhage, and there's uh, different treatments which I won't talk